ബാദ്യമീനുസ്ലിമ اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه Dear respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Last time we left off in the uh, with the life of Nuh alayhi uh, salam currently we are at the point where Nuh alayhi salam was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin in building the ark in preparation for the flood in preparation for the azab which was to come upon the dunya so nuh alayhi salam his only mission now his only uh, task is to complete the construction of the ark and as we know the kuffar at this time they were still mocking nuh alayhi salam they were still making nasty comments on nuh alayhi salam whenever they would find nuh alayhi salam building the ark they would come up to him the leaders from amongst them and they would say to Nuh alayhi salam that oh, I thought you were a prophet you're not giving us dawah anymore or you a carpenter now you know are you a, an engineer now what why is this you're a prophet one day you're, you're a carpenter the next they would mock Nuh alayhi salam like this and Nuh alayhi salam he wasn't bothered by this Nuh alayhi salam he simply continued he simply continued by uh, completing the task of building the ark So Nuh alayhi salam after being continuously mocked by the kuffar they that this that's that very same stubbornness this very same stubbornness of the kuffar this very same belief of the kuffar likewise will be reflected on the day of judgment as we know from the narrations which have been mentioned firstly where the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he narrates he may he mentions يجيء نوح عليه السلام وامته so نوح عليه السلام and his ummah and his community they will come on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فيقول الله عز وجل ان الله سبحانه وتعالى هي will say هل بلغت هل بلغت he will say to نوح عليه السلام هل بلغت did you inform them did you convey my message to them to which فيقول he will respond to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na'am i did my lord ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i did tell them i told them that you are one i told them that i am from the messengers i told them to abandon the idols i told them to turn towards you 950 years i did this for fa yaqulu li ummatihi and it would be said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will say to the to the nation of nuh alayhi salam hal bal hal ballagakum did this message reach you guys did this message reach you guys fa yaquluna la they will res- respond to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that allah even knows knowing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows they will respond to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no you know we we didn't receive any message ma ja'ana min nabiy no, no, no one came to us from the messengers they, this is the, with the same stubbornness and with the same disbelief they will reject that a nabi ever even came to them they will reject nuh alayhi salam's presence in the dunya they will say we will we never heard of him fa yaqulu lin nuh so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will then say to nuh alayhi salam may yashhadu laka who will who will be a witness for you 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 say that they they weren't uh, you you did inform them who's your witness fa yaqulu and then nuh alayhi salam he will turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will say muhammadun wa ummatuhu allahu akbar he will say it is muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and 
his ummah and his community and his nation. And we will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will make as we will be witnesses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He did inform the people. Allahu Akbar. We will be from amongst these witnesses. And taking this back, of course, to uh, Surah Buruj, where it all began. Wa shahidim wa mashhur. Similarly here, we will be the shahid. We will be the one who were witnessing, as we were informed in the Quran al kareem that this, these instances took place. Nuh alayhi salam did convey the message. And the mashhur, that will take place on the Yawm al qiyamah When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask from us, that did, did, are you guys witnessing for Nuh? And we will all then tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that yes, he did convey the message. Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this uh, a warning that Nuh alayhi salam did. You know this, normally when you're warning someone, you know, you're telling them, don't do this, don't do that. And you're only warning them in regards to what they need to be warned about. You're only telling them in regards to what the circumstance requires. But Nuh alayhi salam, he was so um, strict in his warning. He was he was so committed to warning them and to t and telling them to come to Allah subhanahu wa taala that Nuh alayhi salam, he wasn't only informing them about the warnings of this dunya. Nuh alayhi salam, as in those those things which could potentially take place in their time. Nuh alayhi salam, he would warn them about things which weren't even likely to take place in their lifetime. It's mentioned in another hadith. Wherever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been narrated from Abdullah ibn Umar, wherever he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was praising Allah subhanahu wa taala one day, then he began in talking about the uh, uh, Dajjal, and he said that indeed I am I'm, I have come to warn you guys. He's saying this to the companions. Indeed, I'm here to warn you today. Wama min nabiyin illa waqad andara kawmahu. There wasn't from amongst the messengers except that he came to warn the people. Meaning the, the messengers, they came to warn the people in regards to the Jal. There wasn't from amongst them except that they did come to warn the, the people. Lakat andara nuhan kawmahu. How Nuh alayhi salam, when he warned his people in regards to the Jal. Walakinna ni sa'akulu lakum fihi kawlan, lam yakulhu nabiyun nikomihi. However, for me, I will tell you today that there is something that the rest of the messengers didn't tell you in regards to the Jal. Ta'alamuna annahu a'war. Do you know that the Dajjal is one-eyed? Allahu Akbar. And there's many different um, aqwal in regards to this eye of the Dajjal. Of course, just a brief mention, I don't want anyone to be thinking, but what about this? So, some say that uh, the Dajjal only has one eye. Whereas others, they say that he has two eyes, but one eye is severely smaller than the other eye. And then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ بِأَعْوَرَ And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He is not one-eyed. And also, another narration has been mentioned here, whereby... Um, and he mentions that the Dajjal, he was from amongst those people who is one-eyed. And not only that, he was going to bring uh, the likes of heaven and hell and show it to the people. Allahu Akbar. So uh, this was the extent in which Nuh alayhi salam, he was warning the people that, guys, you need to be fearful of what's going to come now. And even those things which weren't going to come, he was telling them about these things as well. So we go back, of course, to the... Uh, to the boat where uh, in regards to the description of the boat the details of the boat it was said that the height of the boat was approximately and there's many many aqwal wallahi there's, there's, there's so many aqwal here but from amongst those which have been chosen as the, the, uh, the unanimously agreed upon the boat itself was 30 yards high it was 30 yards high and within this boat within this arc there was three levels the bottom level the middle level and the top level and each of these levels in terms of size was 10 yards in size so the bottom the bottom uh, level was 10 yards the middle level was 10 yards and the top level was 10 yards also and we, we come to know later that within these levels on the bottom level it was the animals who stayed there those who were wild those who were uh, uh, who were tamed these isles these animals, they were in the bottom part. The middle level was reserved for the humans, as in those who were the companions of Nuh and the family of Nuh And in the top level, the final, the, the, the last level was the birds. So after, of course, this ark was constructed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells Nuh that, you know, now the, the, the ark is constructed, 
I'm going to tell you the sign. So when you will come to know that the flood is now coming, Allahu Akbar. Now I'm going to give you the sign and when it's going to come. And at this point that you know that the sign is here, when you see this sign, I want you to take your followers. I want you to take those who said, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you to take your family members, the ones who obeyed, the ones who accepted me. I want you to also gather animals in pairs, in pairs however, one male, one female. I want you to take them and get, guide them to your ark, take them to the ark and wait there until uh, uh, until the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. So the sign was that when the oven, when the clay oven, when the clay oven, notice the clay oven, when it begins to overflow with water, when does a oven overflow with water? Allahu Akbar. When does the, uh, an oven do that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you see this, at that point begin to gather the people, begin to tell them that come towards the ark. And of course, Nuh alayhi salam, he sees this sign, and then he begins to call the, the animals. He begins to call from amongst those uh, small people. It's been narrated that only 80, 80 people, 78 or 80 people accepted Nuh alayhi salam. 950 years of the belief, of da'wah. 80 people, 40 women, 40 men. They came, they went inside of the boat and they waited. And it's at this point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran al-Kareem, فَفَتَحْنَا أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَاءٍ مُنْهَامِرٍ and then we opened up the gates of the heaven with flowing water, with gushing water. Allahu Akbar, with gushing water. And just to try to make you understand, just to give you a, a little example of what this, you know, just a minute, small example of what this, what might this have looked like. So when, when of course, we were all children, maybe four or five years old, we didn't uh, have showers at that time. So we would shower, we would bathe. In, with buckets and uh, smaller buckets we would use to pour our head, our parents would bathe this. So when we would come towards the end of the, the bath, we would have our parents fill up these uh, these buckets again. And then at the end, they would throw this bucket on top of us. It would only last a second, maybe two. But the point is that how quickly did the water leave the bucket? How fast was it that the water left from the bucket? And you have a shower head nowadays, you know, water comes sprinkling out. Now you see the rain normally it comes sprinkling like a shower head. But on that day it was like the bucket. But not like that. It was 10, 15 million times. 10, 15 million times more than that. That same water that you see from a bucket being poured out. And we caused and we opened up the heavens. Like, and the rain it fell like pouring water. Pouring rain, pouring water. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only that he mentions in the next verse that he calls the earth then to spring forward water from the uh, mountains, from the from the grass, from the from the earth, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls holes uh, uh, and water to gush from these holes, springs of water. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about how the two waters met, Allah wa the water from the sky and the water from the, uh, the, the water from the heavens and the water from the earth. They then, they mix together, they then, they come together, Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this great miracle. And then, of course, we know that the, the boat of, uh, the ark of Nuh alayhi salam is upon uh, these crashing uh, waves and these uh, waves which are devouring the people at this point. And Nuh alayhi salam, he looks towards the boat and he realizes from amongst the boat, you know, Nuh alayhi salam, he has four children, four sons, and he only sees three of them. He only sees three of them. And he notices that one of his sons by the name of Yam, he wasn't present. So he looks out, where is Yam? And he sees him and he calls out to him, you know, oh son, come, you know, no one's going to save you now. This is the time to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, come back to Rabb. And the, his son, Allahu Akbar. He responds back to Nuh alayhi salam that today I will make um, my journey to the top of the mountains and I will save myself. And Nuh alayhi salam he turns and he says, No one can save you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please, I beg of you, just come back onto the boat. So the son, Yam, he makes his journey to the top of the mountains and it's reported, Allahu Akbar, in the tafsir that the water it reached 15 yards. 15 yards above the highest mountain in the earth. And we know that the Mount, Mount Everest is 8,848 8, meters in size, in length. This is what we know about the Mount Everest. And it reached even above this mountain. And Nuh alayhi salam, he was an onlooker witnessing the great 
punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the crushing rivers, the crushing uh, power. And then it comes and it overtakes the son of Nuh alayhi salam and devours all of the people in the earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after having kept his promise, after having delivered this azab to the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then commands the earth to take in the water. You know, take in the water, swallow the water now. That's enough. We're done. The people are dead. They're no more. So then, uh, Allah, uh, at this point, Nuh alayhi salam, he hasn't realized that the water, that the flood has ended. But eventually, uh, Nuh alayhi salam, he comes to know and realizing that the uh, the water has passed, the flood has ended. And we know that Nuh alayhi salam uh, then takes, uh, comes off the ark. And alongside coming off the ark, all of the people, they come off the ark. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has saved them all. All of the people have been saved. And what we know is that, uh, about Nuh alayhi salam, is that he lived for maybe around 300 years after that, 350 years. He, he, he spent the rest of his life in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another point to mention um, very quickly is that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that the, those people who were present in the boat, in the ark of Nuh alayhi salam, they, when they had gone off the boat, they were not capable of giving birth. They were not capable of having children at that point. Only except from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salam, the children of Nuh alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam, only they were able then to procreate. So this is why uh, when you hear uh, people say Nuh alayhi salam, he is the second Adam. This is the reason why. It's because no other child was born except at that time that it was from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. So now, of course, we've come to the end of the story of Nuh alayhi salam. So what have we learned from the story? Very first thing, taking it back to uh, Surah Buruj, فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will do what He wants, He will do what He intends. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He wishes for, that thing will take place. There's nothing you can do to avoid that. Yam, He thought to Himself, the son of Nuh, He thought to Himself He could escape the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us once again, the, the way that the waves crushed the son of Nuh alayhi salam, because of his disbelief, because of his stubbornness, Allahu Akbar. So the first thing is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most definite. The second lesson, of course, is we all choose how we believe. We all choose how we act. We all say that we are Muslim. We all say that we, we believe. How many of us today, you know, how many of us you see today, they're not even fasting. It's, it's the month of Ramadan, they're not fasting. They, it's the month of Ramadan, they're not praying. We choose how we act. We choose how we believe. Similarly, the people who in the time of Nuh alayhi salam, 950 years he preached to them and they didn't accept the da'wah from Nuh alayhi salam. We choose how we act. Not only that, it's another lesson that we learn from the life of Nuh alayhi salam is not giving up on the people. 950 years and only at that point when he realized that they would, he was only pushing them further away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to leave them now. So it's, not, it's, it's about not giving up on the people, but advising them. But this advice that we give to them, this is the most important thing that I want you to take away. It's the diversity of approach, the way Nuh alayhi salami approached them. So for example, you, you, maybe you're, you're trying to inform your brother to, to perform namaz, your, your father to perform namaz, whatever it may be. It's about the way you approach them. So Nuh alayhi salam, when he initially goes up to the people, when he tells them that, look, you need to take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rabb. You need to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he came with all these claims and all of these messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't just do it by standing on top of the highest building and then telling them, oh, take Allah as a Lord. He took from amongst them a, a community, you know, he, he stood at one point and he said to all of them that accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other times he took groups from amongst them. In little groups, and he would tell them, look, guys, you need to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the true Lord. And other times he would take just a few individuals, just one, one person at a time, and he used to tell them one to one, come on, look, you know that this is the true reality. This is the true haqiqa of the dunya. This is the meaning of Islam. So it's about the diversity of approach, the way we approach the people. Similarly, now we find ourselves, of course, when you're trying to uh, tell people to, uh, to accept. And, and it is very well likely, some of you might be saying, and thinking at this moment that look, I've tried with so, so and so many people 
before. I've tried with my own father. I've tried with my own son. I've tried with my brother to convince him. But wasn't it the case that the wife of Nuh salam, the son of Nuh salam, those who were the closest to Nuh salam, they still rejected him. So it's very well likely that your father today, your mother, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, anyone you know, it's very well likely that they don't accept what you're saying. But the point is that you continue to tell them that, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. You must continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continue uh, in your belief with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't deter from the path, the path of the, uh, the mu'mineen. Don't deter from this path. It's still your duty to do that. And of course, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold everyone to account for his own sins. Of course, we know that. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us the tawfiq to encourage others, and not only others, yourself first and foremost, to act upon the religion. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive me if I've made any errors. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> خير الخلق كله مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله